Hey there everybody, and welcome back to another video. This is Daniel, and we're going to be looking at this time lapse I did for one of my illustrations named Domino. And this is a follow up to a video I posted called How I Approach Illustrations and Why It's Like Cooking. So if you haven't seen that, just go check it out. I'll put the link in the description below. So the first things first, this stage I am moving on to the final illustration and I'm starting off very, very basically. I've got the block in of my initial idea and I've done thumbnails, I've done the color pass and everything. You can even see in the middle of the screen, I have a very small image there and that's essentially my roadmap for this illustration because I did that at a very small resolution. Now that I'm working in a bigger document in Photoshop, I've just decided to have that in there so I know exactly what I should be painting. And the kinds of things I'm focusing on right now is just getting the room to have a bunch of details. So I'm filling in the blanket here. I'll go ahead and add some of the other furniture. At this stage, I'm really thinking about covering as much of the canvas as possible and sort of in big strokes and big blocks of color so that I can start detailing it. For me, I like to work as simply as possible when I can. And so I'll try and get the lighting done first. Um, as you can see there, I just skip forward a little bit. And basically what I did was just added a bit of contrast between the warm light coming in from the window and the rest of the room, which I kind of tinted with a purple sort of color. And to just give you guys a bit of context for this illustration, uh, I like the idea of cleaning rooms and I find it very therapeutic when I'm actually doing it. So I wanted to create something that had that same kind of feeling. And by doing something as simply as cleaning your room, I feel like it's doing a lot of mental decluttering as well, which is why I named it Domino. And I also got a question on Instagram from Maz Effect. Uh, shout out to Maz, I'll link her Instagram in the description. And she asked me how I approach using colors in my illustrations and the kinds of things I'm thinking about. So because I wanted this to have a very warm and vibrant feeling, my colors needed to reflect that. And so basically just having all of the warm be around the focal point, which is the character, and having that nice contrast with the rest of the environment um, was just something that I had in mind and I don't know exactly the colors for every single item or all of the furniture or anything like that but as I'm painting I kind of always refer back to my goals and how I can best achieve that. At this stage you would have also noticed that the character is very basic. That's just because I detail the environment to a point where I have enough information for the lighting and colors and once I've done that I will go ahead and start detailing the character uh, fully. And just one thing to note as well is that I have a second monitor where I'm using a lot of references and constantly referring back to them just to make sure that my scene is still somewhat realistic. Uh, I can't really draw or paint anything without good references and so they, to me, feel like puzzle pieces because I'm gathering a bunch of different things, whether it's lighting or clothing or anatomy or posing or whatever it is. And in my illustration, it's kind of just assembling all of it together in the best possible way. And because I like starting off with line art, um, I decided to fill in a background layer with just pure white and turn down the opacity so that way I can still see where the character is in relation to the environment and then go ahead and fill in those blocks of color that you can see there. Though multiple times throughout this image, I end up changing the character's pose just because I wasn't really feeling it and by the end of the illustration it kind of falls into place but I honestly think I probably would have gotten a lot better if I decided on the pose and everything beforehand uh, even though it worked out. One thing you might have noticed me use a lot is the lasso tool and that's just because I like having hard shapes in my images so I'll go ahead and block out things like little notes, little details using the lasso and filling that in with some kind of paintbrush. It's also a great way to subtract things from shapes. And by that kind of pushing and pulling nature, um, it's just a way I, I really like to work. 
And the way that I also work and approach this big illustration is I kind of develop everything kind of like a Polaroid. So you see me jumping around to a lot of different areas and detailing this and detailing that. Though as I get more experience, I feel like I should probably focus on the focal points, make sure they're up to a good standard and then kind of radiate out of that like a circle and detail things from there. And the reason I feel that way now is just because I remember this particular illustration being really challenging actually and I probably wasted a lot of time. Though I mean, that's also what hindsight 2020 is for. Um, yeah, I think you get more experience as you just keep doing it, keep at it, and try not to get too frustrated with yourself because sometimes we can see what we need to do, but we might not necessarily have the skill to do it. Uh, and for me, this was one of those things just because the illustration itself was very chaotic and there was a lot of mess going around and because I wanted to show again the process of cleaning a room and there's a single pile of clothes on the bed there and that's kind of just supposed to symbolize stepping in the right direction and you also see me finally change the character into what it ends up being um, and again that's just a lot of push pulling trying things out experimenting failing and just getting back to it really the overall time lapse itself uh, I had to cut down from about 13 hours but I'm pretty sure it took longer than that including everything else and I'm also a big advocate for just taking breaks and not grinding yourself into just feeling burnt out because you need to be able to enjoy the process somewhat and there's a fine line between discipline and overworking yourself and I, I think that, you know, we're really up the only ones that can determine that for ourselves, but it's okay. You don't have to do everything at once. You don't have to have all the answers at once. So another important thing that I'm keeping in mind is just trying to include as much bounce light as possible, because it really does help to tie objects within your scene and even your characters. And one way I tried to do that was just on the trash bag there by including some of the warm lighting as it's hitting the floorboards and reflecting back up into it. And it's just those smaller little things that can really push it forward. The way that I like to approach all of the complicated shapes and everything is really just by keeping them simple. So you can see in the background that for that poster and for that hanging frame, it's literally just a bunch of blocky shapes. And this is probably more of an art style than anything else but I really like the way that you can create visual noise by using simple blocks of color. And I've used that again and again throughout this painting to just give you the impression of a messy and cluttered room, but not necessarily having to go in and paint everything by hand because that would just take way too long. Just continuing to detail some of the room here and filling in the empty shelves, adding in some more furniture. Um, right there, I just put in a big block of light coming in from the window and right now I'm just adjusting the levels and trying to double down on that lighting. Sometimes at the end of painting sessions, um, the entire image might not be done, but I'll go ahead and add some post-processing just to see what it could look like. And that might actually help influence the next painting session as I go back and work on it. And another thing that I'm doing just to give the objects a little bit more visual interest is by using texture. And that's just using various brushes that I've downloaded or using things like color dynamics and the brush settings. And I'll probably make a future tutorial on this and explain the kinds of things that I do and how I create my own custom brushes too. At a certain point, the painting starts to come together and this is when I get super excited and motivated because I feel like for me anyway a lot of the start of it is very demoralizing because it looks really bad and ugly and just trying to find every way to keep it together. So unfortunately my time lapse stopped recording there so we can't actually see the end of my process but I can break down what I did to get it looking the way it does and that's just through a lot of post-processing color tweaks, adding noise, adding 
a bunch of different contrast sort of things and uh, let's just get into it. I'm going to be releasing a future video where I break these down into much more detail. But for now, let's just go ahead and check these out. So the first one I've got here is color balance. Uh, basically pushing some of the colors towards the warmer side to uh, really double down on that sunlight feeling coming into the room. I've also got color fill here. Um, basically I've just put in a warmer color and set it to soft light and turn down the opacity. And that again is just to hit some of the areas here in shadow. And it's a very subtle change, but I like the way that it looks. I've also got some chromatic aberration and that's mainly around the sides of the image. If I just turn that off, yeah, you can see what it does. Um, this is just a way for me to blur things without actually using blur, uh, more of a stylistic choice. And uh, the art from Into the Spider-Verse likes to do this and I just thought it looks really nice, so I tried it out myself. I've also got a high pass filter and if I go ahead and turn that on and off, you can just see that it adds a little bit of sharpness around the edges here. And I usually paint that around my focal points just to add a little bit more contrast. I've also got a final layer with camera raw filter. Um, and it's just over here, camera, camera raw filter. And you can do tons of cool different things. And it's really just global changes across the board. So if you really want to go ahead and change your levels or change your colors or tweak anything, add a little bit of color grading, a bit of vignette, you can go ahead and do that. And I didn't know this beforehand, but if you convert your layer into a smart object, you can actually go ahead and tweak it beforehand. But right now everything's just baked into the image. And finally, I also have just a bit of noise. If I just zoom in here, you can go ahead and see it just adds a little bit of artifacts around here. And that just ties the image together as a whole. So thank you for watching. I really hope that this helped you guys out. And please let me know in the comments if there's anything I could go ahead and explain a bit more of or anything that you would like to know in the future. Thank you for tuning in and I'll see you next time.